Hey guys, it's Vadim with MaxTech and welcome to the world's first exclusive tour of Eureka's headquarters. Yes, they invited us and sponsored this video to show you guys what it's like inside of their headquarters. And I'm really excited because we're also gonna be taking a first look at their reliability factory with all their testing and their electronics workshop as well. So I'm super excited, let's go in. Now you probably heard about the brand Eureka before. They have a very long history in the professional vacuum cleaner business, actually over a hundred years. And more recently they've started getting into robotics and really innovating in that space and making a lot more cordless and professional robot vacuums. Like for example, if you saw my review of the E10S, you know that they've been innovating in terms of the design with its multi-cyclonic design where you can see through the dustbin since it's clear where it allows it to be bagless with a really quick easy button press to empty which is really nice since you don't have to buy bags and now they are innovating once again with the brand new E20 Plus. And this is it right here we have the E20 Plus with a lot of new design changes and upgrades as well as the J15 Pro Ultra and before I show you guys the tour where we're going to look at all their different testing with a reliability testing lab and electronics workshop, I do wanna go through a couple of the features of the new E20 Plus. Now with the new E20 Plus, there are three main upgrades. The first one is gonna be the vacuum suction power, where they've essentially doubled the power to 8,000 PAs of suction, which is gonna help get all those larger pieces of debris. On top of that, they've also added a new anti-tangle brush. And finally, the third main feature is they have improved the obstacle avoidance by adding lasers to the front instead of just having the lighter on top. So it's now more effective at seeing the obstacles and avoiding them, which is a big deal because if you have some toys or let's say some cloth that's left out and it doesn't see it, it can get stuck and just basically jam. And once again, the big essential part of it is the bagless self-emptying design where it rolls up, it empties itself, and you don't have to worry about emptying the robot vacuum, which really helps with the convenience. And now let's get into the part that I'm really, really excited about. We're gonna go over to the factory and the lab and meet with their product manager, Mr. Lee, to see how all of this comes together behind the scenes. Let's go. And now welcome guys to Eureka's reliability testing lab. I have Mr. Lee here, yep. who is the product manager of the E-Series, I believe, right? That's Including right. the uh, E10S, the E20 yes. Plus. Yes, and here we are. This is really cool because we have different stations around us that are doing reliability testing, essentially doing different tasks multiple times for extended periods of time. Like for example, this right here is the uh, extended mop, mop. pads. So yeah. it kind of lifts up and down, it extends as well. Yes. And about how many times do you think each one gets tested? It's 100,000 times. 100,000 times, wow. So literally I see some numbers on there, 85,000 yes. and it's still going. Yeah, right. That is really, really impressive. And here I can see that we have some sort of a logic board connected to this. What's inside this enclosure? That's the uh, roller brush. The roller brush, okay. And what kind of testing goes on for this one? We're running for the roller brush live. We count for 50,000 hours of running. 50, wow, 50,000, just so 50,000 times it goes up and down, essentially yes. just, okay, and, and it goes up and down for different uh, surfaces? Uh, like yes, carpet on carpet it's lifting up, and on the normal surface it's uh, down. Oh, okay. And also for different dirts, and for like waters, it's up, because we don't want to uh, suck the water into the motor. Nice. And now here we can see that there is some sort of a roller truck. Yes. That's going. Yeah. What are these right here? These are the main wheels, and uh, we count times for the running. We okay. uh, have fifteen hundred hours of uh, uninterrupted. Wow. And it's just rolling and rolling and making sure that it's reliable and it yes. doesn't go bad. Wow, that's really cool. Yes. That's awesome that you have all of these set up here just doing the same thing. I see that you have the little the swing yes. arms right here. This is the brush that that's collects the, the, brush. the debris. And these also just keep running for reliability testing. Yes. And right. essentially, if you see any errors or anything, you bring it back to the research lab and they improve, right? Of course. That's yes. after our technicians note down the errors. Okay. and the time of course and then our engineers upstairs will pick up those uh errors and uh check if there are any components that's wrong nice 
And I understand you also have another part of the reliability testing lab, which yes. is for the robot vacuums themselves? Yes, it's up there also, okay. and that's for the whole robot testing. Oh, nice. Well, let's go check it out. And here we are in a different section of the reliability lab, and you can see we have a bunch of different sections here. And uh, Lee, what's going on over here in these So stations? other than testing the components, after that, we put them together into a whole robot okay. and test it in one piece. Oh, I so see. here we run them continuously. Oh, okay. Uh, so just they keep going and going. Yes, for right. fifteen hundred hours nonstop. Fifteen fifteen hundred hours nonstop. They just keep. That is that is really really cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, and I understand you also have a collision section here. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. It's that way. Oh yeah. Let's go check it out. All right, guys. This is really cool. You can see that we have the collision testing going on, and I really love these rigs that are set up. You can see that they're basically colliding these little uh, blue pins, right? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Yeah, can you explain exactly like what's going on and why they do this and why it's important? Sure, of course. The robot as a whole uh, have many collisions expected, uh -huh. but we expected more collision to happen yep. on the main wheels and front bumpers. Oh, I so see. that's why we specifically test those in a higher standard. Oh, we okay. use uh, push bars from up, yep. around, and below, you cannot see. Uh, oh, to test. Below. Okay. Yes. And this is like if it collides into like um, chair legs or like. Yeah, that's possible. That kind of, yep, that's possible too. So it's basically doing the reliability. How many times does it collide with it? In total? It's uh, 200,000. Over 200. So it just keeps colliding over yes. and over. Oh, wow. That's, that's yes. really cool. So it basically has like a spring mechanism that's built in. Yes. And here we are in Eureka's injection molding facility where you can see a bunch of different machines and conveyor belts that are coming down. And essentially the different parts, the plastic parts that are put together for the vacuums, they come out as one piece like this right here. This is the bin for the dirty water tank that goes into one of their robot vacuum cleaners into the base station. And it's really cool just to see how all these are coming down. They come down the line and all those parts get taken to the general assembly where the entire thing gets assembled, like the robot vacuums and everything else. So this is really, really cool to see how this happens. And here we are in Eureka's electronic workshop. Mr. Lee, thank you for taking me here. This is absolutely mind blowing. Seeing all of these different machines working on, I understand the PCB, correct? Right, right. Yeah, so can you take me through like each step from the start to the finish? Of course. Yeah. First step here, okay. we put the metal solders onto the PCB board. Okay. And it's like a raw PCB. Yes. Puts the solders on, and I can see that all. <laughs> you have the little designs that come out, right? Yes. So it just it's just in line, ready for the next step. Right. Okay. And, and after yeah. plumbing check, next okay. step is the SMC, the surface mount, which okay. is the core. We use very advanced. Uh, I mean, it looks very, very, very advanced. I can see these yes. robotic arms just moving crazy fast. That's right. Yeah, and I like how it's almost like they're going to crash into each <laughs> other, but it, you know. Yeah. So they need to. <laughs> wow. Just the speed at how they're going. And I know I see like these little spools here. Can you explain what all of this is right here? So these are all the small components, resistors, capacitors oh. onto the PCB board. Oh. And uh, it's speeding oh. up so that the oh. arms can pick and oh. pull onto the PCB. So they just pick it up one by one and yes. put it on. Oh, Very wow. quick. That is really cool because I've always wondered how a PCB gets printed. <laughs> and I guess it just comes through and just one by one. Yeah, that's, that's really, that. really impressive. So you have basically uh, two copies of the same thing. Right. So this one and this one. Yeah, to make it even faster. Oh, okay. So kind of doubling the productivity. That's right. Nice. This is really cool. And then I see when they finish, they go over here yes. to this and then they're in line. And what is this long machine? <laughs> it's yeah. really long. Yeah. So before this station, it is in room temperature okay. but with the solder. The solder yeah. needs to heat it up. Okay. To uh, sort of together the components and oh, the PCB board. So this is for that. It's heating up the components. Oh, and it gets soldered. And then after that, what happens? We do a quality check and then a firmware burning onto the PCB board. And how does the firmware get just like they connect the cable and yes. just software based? And right here, they're actually going to let me put on some gloves <laughs> and grab one of the actual PCB motherboards of one of the robot vacuums, right? Do you know yes. which model this is from? <laughs> Actually, I'm no? not sure. Okay. okay, yeah. It's too raw. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. I just see so much going on and it's really cool how we went through that whole process from raw PCB to the printed design, all the components, transistors, 
resistors, everything just get put on. And then once it's done, that's it. They just double check it, quality yeah. check, and they ship it off to another station. Yes, to the assembly okay. line, final oh, assembly yeah. line. And they just assemble all the parts. Yes. This is really cool. I mean, guys, I've never seen this before. I don't know if you guys have, but this is absolutely mind blowing to see the level of work and the care and just all the dedication that goes in. This is really, really awesome. Thank you, <laughs> thank you once again. So there you guys have it. We are back in our studio. Once again, thank you so much, Eureka, for bringing us to your headquarters, giving us the factory tour. My mind was blown by how everything just goes in to making these products. It's just absolutely incredible seeing all of the steps with all the reliability testing, the electronics shop, all of it just blew my mind seeing how much high-end modern manufacturing goes into making something like a robot vacuum. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Once again, thank you, Rika, for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.